Um, I think my brawn with drag race is done. <laughs> Let's move on to your arch nemesis, Tamisha Iman. No, why them white shoes? Ew. This was, eh. Uh, no. Okay, um, I mean, no. Tamisha. I'm going to show you why you sometimes have to learn how to respect your elders. And make sure Monet get this, because now Tamisha Iman is really coming for you. I didn't start this, but I'm going to end it. Ooh, this tea is hot. But the tea I'm drinking is actually quite cold. It's matcha, which I just discovered in 2021. Can you believe that? Hi, ugly. It's me, Bussy. And welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about the one, the only, Tamisha Iman as it should be, right? We're going to be taking a look at Tamisha's rocky relationship with World of Wonder and seeing how it's changed over time. There's been some recent developments, I guess you could say, so we're going to be taking a look at how that relationship may be affecting things like her YouTube channel, her tour schedule, and even a potential future run on All Stars. We'll also be taking a look at her most recent live posted on May 1st, where she is promising to read Monet exchange into the ground for comments that she made with Bob on their show Sibling Rivalry. Let's just say Tamisha is not happy Happy, and the girls are about to be fighting. Before we get started, I do want to remind you all information in this video is my opinion and should be digested as such. Now, let's get started. Let's go ahead and jump back in time to about a month ago to the live. <laughs> yeah, the one that broke the internet or at least my channel. Tamisha Iman spoke out, to say the least. And in that now deleted Instagram live video, she was expressing some concern that season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race may be rigged. Once you look at this particular season and you see a lot of the f that slides and that goes on, it pisses you off. Soon as this contract is up and I can voice my opinion about a lot of the stuff that I've seen, the contract can be up at 12.01. I'm at 12.02, I'm coming live. <laughs> And a quick sidebar, I do want to say I love RuPaul's Drag Race, obviously. I mean, I have like a whole YouTube channel dedicated to reviewing it. But every time I make a video like this, people freak out in my comments asking why I'm being so critical of it. And like, quick newsflash, you can like or love something and still be critical of it. In fact, I would say that's healthy. As an example, let's use Tamisha. She's going off in this live about season 13 being rigged, and then in the exact same live says that she would be open to doing All-Stars. All-Stars, you know what guys, I would love to, if I go back to all stars it would not be for me it would be for you guys shortly after my video went up tamisha iman's live mysteriously <laughs> disappeared from the internet personally i believe world of wonder had a hand in that if you've seen my contract video you'll know that they actually retain exclusive rights to managing all of the queen's social media from the time that they sign the contract to like 12 months after the last episode they appear in but the more concerning thing here to me at least is how tamisha started acting in these instagram lives which she does regularly after this little debacle on March 26, Tamisha goes live again. Here, she is much more restrained in how she's willing to talk about the show to her fans. She immediately starts off the video answering a fan's questions about interviews, saying this. Actually, we can't do any interviews right now. And you know, a lot of people have been hitting me up for interviews. Interviews have to go through World of Wonder. Which I think perfectly illustrates how the contract our queens have signed to be on Drag Race can help World of Wonder control the narrative about their show. In this same live, the fans start asking Tamisha who she is rooting for in our final four. She says this. You all not about to get me to say anything pertaining to those people that are still in that contest. Do you understand I am under contract? I mean, this is somebody who went from freely speaking about threatening to break the NDA to someone that now can't even say who they're rooting for? Kind of weird. But back to our timeline in which there is a short period of time in which Tamisha does not post any Instagram lives. Maybe she got busy with gigs or maybe she was talking to lawyers. On April 14th, Tamisha Iman decides to break her Instagram live silence by going live with her lawyer. Unfortunately, this live seems to have disappeared from the internet forever. I searched high and low on Reddit, Instagram, Twitter, even Facebook. It's gone. Luckily though, we know what happened and have information about what transpired thanks to this Reddit user who posted a thread concerning the live. And we also have this other Reddit user to thank who was kind enough to post a recap as a comment in this thread as it was going on. They wrote, Tamisha went live to correct what she had said in her previous lives because she didn't want to come off as bitter. Tamisha won't answer if she wants to do all 
All-Stars. Tamisha feels like she's not getting a lot of the same post-show opportunities that some of the other queens have been getting, so she's planning her own network of shows to launch. This information is also corroborated by other users in the same thread who said, Tamisha's lawyer told her to nod when asked about All-Stars. And another user who elaborated on those said network of shows saying she's starting her own TV show on Roku with 10 shows ready to go. And I think Tamisha going live with her lawyer present in the room shows just how careful these queens feel they need to be when discussing this show and elements of the contract just so they don't get slapped with that famous $2 million fine. Anyways, I don't want to speculate too much on what she said might have meant, but she said what she said. <laughs> allegedly, according to Reddit. Her next live though on April 17th does give us some more insight into her situation. She said this about future happenings. I got a lot of good things going on guys, but I really couldn't say anything until after, well I can't say anything until after, I guess next week when everything is over. She also says this when someone asks her if she's going to be touring in the next year. Are you going on tour? I haven't been invited. What, what do you mean? Let's be clear. The Tamisha Iman tour? Or are you talking about something else? She basically caught herself saying that she wasn't invited to what something that every other queen was invited to are you going on tour i haven't been invited what, what do you mean i don't know but it seems a little shady the plot does continue to thicken and she says this about her relationship with the other girls in her season i'm not close with anyone from season 13. i would say kimura kimura caught, hits me up even if i don't respond back to kimura she said hey mama what's going on mama we also get a little more insight into her desire to do all stars when she's talking about her merch she says this i know a lot of people get offended by me promoting my stuff or whatever but you know this is how i'm going to afford to do whatever i plan to do in the future if that's going to all stars it's going to take money these clips definitely seem to suggest that tamisha is willing to participate in a future season of all stars given the opportunity so yeah shameless tamisha iman plug buy her merch support this queen we stand. And all those little things were interesting, but my favorite part of this live <laughs> is when somebody asked her if she liked the reunion. Did I enjoy the reunion? <laughs> Regardless, she still wants to do All Stars all the way up until April 17th. Come to All Stars, mama. Hey, if they have me. But how did we go from that to this. Um, I think my run with Drag Race is done. <laughs> this clip was from a live Tamisha did on April 25th. Like clearly something has happened here that has totally changed her opinion about wanting to participate on the show in the future. But what was it? I can't say with 100% certainty, but I think we can probably guess it's due to what's been happening with her YouTube channel. She was hit with a block a copyright block on her personally produced music video uploaded to her personal channel, which surely sounds like some kind of mistake, right? Well, let's quickly talk about the three major types of copyright issues that creators can run into on YouTube. Firstly, there's a copyright claim. This is what happens when you upload content that is claimed or owned by another entity. Typically, a claim will allow your video to remain up and playable, but all the ad revenue from that video is going to be redirected to the claimant. This is mostly what happens when there's like copyrighted music in your videos, for example, drag queens uploading digital drag performances that have copyrighted songs. Sometimes though, a claim can lead to a block. In the scenario of a copyright block, instead of redirecting ad revenue, your video actually gets blocked from playing, whether that's in certain countries or throughout the entire world. Finally, there is one more copyright issue you can run into on YouTube. It's the copyright strike. This is the most serious of the three. And if you get three strikes, your channel is permanently deleted from YouTube. This occurs when somebody representing the original copyright holder files a DMCA takedown on the content that you've uploaded. It's a legal process. This is what happened with me in Viacom last year when I was literally just posting silent little clips to review the runway looks. So Tamisha's content was claimed and blocked, but the question remains, who buy? We could probably guess that it was Viacom based on the fact that the music video she tried to upload appeared in an actual episode of RuPaul's Drag Race. But instead of just guessing, a really great channel called Top RPDR Videos did a little investigation to see if they could try to get some proof. Basically what they found was that the video was claimed and blocked by a company called Collab DRM. Turns out Collab DRM is kind of like a shell company for copyrighted content companies can use to reduce the headache of managing copyrighted content and their associated claims all across YouTube. Top RPR DR videos did also confirm they do at least use this service Collab DRM to claim content like, for example, fashion photo reviews. But why would they do this? Why would they block somebody's personally produced music video that they uploaded to their 
their own personal channel? The short answer is because they can, and they can also make money off of it. The thing is, the contract that you signed to go on RuPaul's Drag Race actually stipulates that World of Wonder as a production company owns any personally copyrighted content that you showcase on the show. And unless Tamisha works something out with the show, she's not ever probably going to be able to upload that music video to her channel and make money off of it. So while I can't say for sure this is why Tamisha was so mad in her recent live, I can speculate that this music video block was the straw that broke her willingness to participate in a future season of All Stars. It's also really clear that she is just tired of people trying to get her to talk about things that happen behind the scenes and break her NDA. She had this to say when somebody asked about her fight with Candy. I don't owe you no explanation. Your name ain't World of Wonder MTV or VH1, so you don't have to. You are an FAN. Stay in your place. Poof. And the thing is, the NDA lasts forever. So like, she's gonna be having to deal with people asking her about this for the rest of her life and she can never talk about it. That would drive me crazy. And most recently, literally while I was editing this video, Tamisha went live and decided to go off on Monet Exchange. Keep in mind, I have Monet blocked. I have sat back and I have let a lady who best look on Drag Race was made with sponges. Read me the icon. The summary of this live is that Tamisha is not happy with how she has been talked about on the review shows hosted by Drag Race alumni, specifically Monet Exchange. I'm going to show you why you sometimes have to learn how to respect your elders. Not one comment I have made publicly about Monet since I entered the show. She has read me at every chance she could get. So do know you have sent for me, so now I am coming. I don't know about y'all, but Tamisha's live kind of caught me off guard. I had no idea there was beef between these two queens. Like, I tuned into sibling rivalry pretty regularly and hadn't heard anything particularly disparaging that Monet had said about Tamisha. But since Tamisha was so mad, I mean, she had even blocked Monet by the time she made this live, I figured there must have been something she was mad about. So with the help of some of my amazing patrons, James Wheelie and Amanda M, we were able to find some clips of Monet saying negative things about Tamisha. Here they are. I know you know me. I don't even know what the f is, is this a reference? <laughs> I'm guessing, but it's some old, old lady shit. I don't know, I don't, first of all, no one is saying holla at me anymore. Well, um, are we I also going to acknowledge the fact that Tamishi Mun is 50 years old. Doesn't Tamishi matter. Mun no, but you chose to come on Drag Race. You knew what Drag Race is. You knew that, you knew that there were dancing challenges. Tamishi Mun knew that she might maybe have to do a fucking acrobat challenge where she's doing uh, cartwheels and backflips and somersaults. Okay. Like, like she knew what she was signing up for to do the competition. Yes, I, would never I hate it from shoe. the neck up and from the ankles down. Everything in the middle, I'm into it. But the neck up, ankles down, I'm like, no, why them white shoes? Ew. I don't like the silver, the way that the silver is laying out. It just, I'm just not a huge fan of it. It's fine. Wearing Tamisha Iman. Okay. Um, I mean, no. Tamisha. No, this is, this is, this is literally Elliot's, but with even less drama and even less stakes. Yeah, I, I thought this was, eh. This is a soft boot for me. This is uh, fine, yeah. Tacky, yeah, it's tacky, it's really tacky. The room was at like a nice medium temperature. Then then Tamisha came in like hot like fish grease girl and got it and got it percolating. I just didn't like this thing in the middle. Like you couldn't, it like bulged her out. And I'm like, uh, the, no. I do not love this look. It's not my favorite oh, of hers. Oh, you about to get what? No, this is not a great look. And I do want to point out that obviously a bunch of strung together clips of Monet saying bad things about Tamisha looks and sounds bad on Monet's part, but those are mixed in between positive things that Monet said about Tamisha as well. Like she's not constantly ragging on her in sibling rivalry. And it's been so funny to watch this unfold on social media today. Bob has been living for the drama, posting TikToks. I have some of these questions. If you guys book Rose, can you book Tamisha? I would actually love to have Tamisha on the show, but also me and Monet are both messy bitches who live for drama. So. First, I was like, mm, feet, as a joke. But bro, I don't think it's a joke anymore. Commenting on Demisha's Instagram, tagging Monet. I mean, he kind of like inflamed this imaginary situation in the reunion, which sparked this response from Demisha. Let's move on <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to your arch nemesis, Tamisha Iman. Oh my God, Bob. Okay, Bob does this thing. He's creating his own fake narrative that literally does not exist. 
So Misha Iman has never said anything about me. I'll be posting the video of Monet versus Tamisha on my Twitter. The rest of the Drag Race girls are also living for it. Jimbo said, who dares summon Tamisha Iman? Bianca Del Rio posted a bunch of eyes. Utica said, blessed be Tamisha Iman. Denali said, speak. Dita said, girl, I'm here for all this. And needless to say, I'm also excited to see how this is going to go down. But I would also love to know what y'all think down in the comments below. Is what Monet said when reviewing Tamisha throughout the episodes of Sibling Rivalry that bad? Is it worth starting beef over like Tamisha Iman is doing? Or is all of this blown totally out of proportion? Because I'm going to make this show so controversial with the people that have felt that they have been done wrong. I'm going to invite Tyra. I'm going to invite the Vixen. Any black authentic girl who felt that they did not get their just due on the show. Because it's a lot of melon throwing around and black girl power and magic. But are you really black? Are you made black for TV? Because I'm from the projects. I'm authentically black. Tamisha, Iman, it's coming for me. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I wish you would. This old bitch. <laughs> she also does in that same video confirm what she said in her most recent live about basically being done with Drag Race. I'm telling you, I have nothing to lose. I care nothing about returning back to RuPaul Drag Race. So is Tamisha open all-stars? Probably not, but I think that also has nothing to do with people like Monet and more to do with her relationship with World of Wonder. Regardless of what happens with her relationship with World of Wonder, I have no doubt that she will continue to be a successful icon as she always has been. She's a fighter at heart, right? I mean, we're talking about somebody who literally survived cancer and competed on RuPaul's Drag Race with an ostomy bag. She don't go down easy. In the meantime, don't forget to support her by buying her merch and the other girls of the cast, of course, as well. And as always, I want to say thank you for watching this video and give a special thanks to all of my patrons who make my channel possible. For just a few bucks a month, they get access to my members-only community over at patreon.com slash bussyqueen and exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, exclusive videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, and more. Click the link in the description of my video to join my patron family today. I also want to give a special shout out to Ali Al, Anthony Bradley, Cameron, Cherry Poppins, Christopher Deutsche Leather, Evan, Fabio, Fractalize, Freddy, GJ Bearclaw, Glenn, Got the Morbs, Jay, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kazuko, Kiki, and John, Maddie Morissette, Nathan, Olympus, Mons, Venus, Opal, Queen Cersei Canister, Ron, Shannon Sky, Sunshine, Tina, Timothy, Tony, Unique, Vendetta, and Wheelie, who are all supporting me at my hottest high tier. And Angel, Caroline, Greg, Cyrus, How? Hope, JV, Joseph, Nurse Luca, Matthew, Rochambeau, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Timotheus, and Tom, who are all supporting me on Patreon at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.